Hi everyone, welcome back to the virtual Benedetti sessions. This is tutorial number four for the intermediate violas. I hope you've had a great week. It was so lovely to see so many of you on our Zoom sectional on Wednesday. Don't forget to warm up before you start playing. There are so many warm ups on the YouTube channel for you to choose from. Don't be afraid to go back to last week and look through those and repeat some, that's absolutely fine. But make sure that you have a look at all of that great content that's there. Today we're going to have a look at the next section of Madachins in more detail because we've already done some familiarisation on that piece and now we're going to really get into the tricky things and try to tackle those. And we are going to then familiarise ourselves with the rest of the Paganini and the variations that we haven't covered yet. We are going to cover each piece in sections. So we're going to be doing little chunks at a time. And that's actually a really good way for you to practice more generally. When you have a piece of music in front of you, you don't always have to start at bar one and play all the way through to the end. It's a really good idea sometimes to start somewhere else or to start with the tricky bit first. Before we start playing today, I just wanted to give you a little word of advice if you are starting to find some of the pieces a little bit tricky or if maybe you're not making as good progress as you were hoping that you would have done at this point. Um, I just wanted to let you know that practice is a process and quite often there are ups and downs in that process and it usually it does not go in a straight line and the best thing to do when you're starting to feel like that if you're feeling like oh I can play all the notes but I just can't get this bowing or there's something that's really difficult I just encourage you to be really kind and positive with yourself and um, sometimes when I'm finding something tricky in a piece, I try to imagine what I would say to my friend if they were having the same problem, if they were struggling with something, what advice would I give them? And I know the advice I would give them would be kind and positive. So I would really recommend that you talk to yourself in that way as well. And that will help you to make those improvements more quickly. We're going to tackle section A to B in Madachins. And before we get stuck into that, let's play our F major scale. It's a really good idea to have a look at the key signature of the piece that you're playing and play the scale before you start. So let's do one slow scale and then one faster scale. And we're going to do the Madachins bowing down, up, up. So let's start quite slow. One, two, one, Okay, and then let's do the scale again. This time let's do descending and let's go a little bit more quickly. Let's try and go near the final speed. If this is still too fast for you, don't worry. Stick with your own pace and try to work up to it gradually. One, two, one, two. Great, now let's have a look specifically at the double stops between A and B. So let's have a go at playing the bowing just on two strings now. So we're gonna double stop our D and our G and we're gonna practice that bowing. Let's do it together now four times. One, two, one, two. <laughs> let's try that again. One, two, one, two. Now, the second bar of A has got a D on top and a B flat on the bottom. So that's great. So what we need to do is we need to put our two on G and we need to make a tunnel for our D string under our fingers so that our fingers aren't touching the D string at all and that's gonna let it ring. So let's find our B flat and our D and see if you can play the D flat and the D separately and make them both really ring. So it won't ring if your fingers are touching the D string 
a little bit, then you're going to get a funny squeaky noise. So make sure you're making a tunnel. If you're struggling to make a tunnel, you can swing your elbow forward a bit and that should help. And make sure your fingers are really on their tips. And then let's practice that double stop together. And now let's practice with Matheton's bowing. One, two, one, two. Great. Now have a look at the end of the line there, the, the line with letter A in it, and you'll see that we have another double stop there and it's with our open G string. So the top line is going to be with an E flat, so we need a nice low one on the D string. It's going to sound a bit like this. And all we need to do there is add in the G as well. Now this is a bit easier because we don't need to make a tunnel for the G this time, so this one shouldn't be too tricky. Let's try this one. One, two, one, two. Okay, so practice those a little bit in isolation and then you can try playing the whole line together to put them back in context. When you're practicing double stops in general, it's quite a good idea to try one of the lines first, like you can try the bottom line first and then the second and the top line second or the other way around. When you get to the end of that line with the letter A in it, for the line underneath, you'll need to jump up into third position. So from the double stop at the end of the line with A on it, this is the fourth line. And then we jump into third. And the reason that we need to jump up to third position there is because the next double stop is easier up there in third position. So we're gonna have one on the G string and three on the C string. So we're gonna to have to do jump during those open strings into third position and then that should be a bit easier. When you've done that, I would then stay in third position for a little while longer for these double stops on these ones. So you can just do one and two and then two and three and then three and four. And then you can jump back into first position using your open G. And this one's a nice easy double stop. Just doing G. And then you've made it all the way to B with all that double stopping. So make sure you take a little bit of time to take that chunk on its own and give it plenty of tries. Let's have a look at the section between B and C. At the beginning of letter B, we have an instruction which is sempre fortissimo e ben marcato. And that means, sempre means always, and fortissimo means really loud. And e ben marcato is well marked. So we want a really clear, crisp sound here. I just want to recap about the divisi. It says D-I-V at the top there above the line. And that means that we are going to choose whether we're playing the notes that have the stems pointing up or the stems pointing down. It might be an idea to take a highlighter and go through and highlight the part that you're going to choose to play and stick with it. So let's have a look now at some of the accidentals. Accidentals are notes which aren't in the key signature. So for example, the top line in the third bar of B, we've got a D sharp, which we play with a low one. And then the bar after that, he writes the B flat to remind us that we've got a B flat in the key signature and the same in the next bar. Then the bar after that, on the top line, we have some A flats. So we start on a G. And we play four close to three. Now the great thing about B to C is in the next four bars are the same as the four bars before. So if you've learned the first four bars then you've really cracked the whole section. Um, let's have a little look at the lower line. So you have a B natural in the third bar, which is a wide two. We have to go back to a B flat. Now if you've chosen the lower line, you've actually got a little bit of a trickier thing then in the fifth and sixth bars of B because we've got an E natural. And then we've got a double stop, sixth there. E flat, which is a low one, and then A flat. And then like 
the upper part, if you learn those four bars really carefully, you will be able to put nearly all of that section together because it's just repeating itself there. Um, I want to draw your attention to the dynamics at the end of this, just before C. This is two bars before C. We have mezzo piano, which you'll know means quite quiet, and then crescendo molto. So we have to get all the way from fortissimo down to mezzo piano. So we're going to need to make some changes with our bow. So when we're playing fortissimo, we're going to be playing near the bridge. <laughs> strong sound and then when we get to this crescendo I would recommend that you don't think of it as mezzo piano before we start that crescendo I would recommend you think about it as pianissimo so we're going to really exaggerate that change because sometimes with crescendo we need to make even more of the gradual getting louder than we think we need to so for example I'm going to play two, four before C that was maybe a little bit much but hopefully you got the idea that that really exaggerates our crescendo if we start really quietly at the beginning of it let's have a look at these last chords because these are quite tricky and it says non divisi here which means that we ideally are going to play all the notes now remember if you find that too tricky at the moment don't worry focus on maybe just the top note or just probably for this bit I would focus on just the lower note of the chord so that you can play that little grace note there and I that rhythm is quite a tricky rhythm because we've got these triplet bars over the top so we're having to feel the music like it's in one big long three so the best thing to do for this is just to feel the groove here so if you listen to the recording and you get really used to what that feels like then you'll find this a lot easier and um, so if we were just playing the lower line from there um, after two bars we can play it together just the look just the lower note of the double stop one two one two okay and now let's try double stopping a fifth there so I need to have quite a flat finger to make that happen playing fifths is something that's quite tricky it's also quite personal so just wiggle around with your finger until you find somewhere that feels comfortable for you now let's try the top double stop and let's not worry about the F grace note let's just play the double stops together one, two, one, two. Okay, now if you're feeling brave, you can find your fifth. And you can also find your sixth on top. It's quite tricky. Just fiddle around with it until you think it's really in tune. And then you can hold all of your fingers down the whole time and play those two bars just by starting on D and G, then rocking over and then rocking back. So this involves a lot of elbow moving like this. So maybe we can start a bit of rocking before and then land on D and G, rock over to C, land on D and G, rock over to C. I think we're ready to try this after after two bars one two one two okay now for this last chord we need to find the most ringing possible sound that we can so let's start off just on any string let's go for G and let's just practice doing a big long down bow with a circle and then make it a little shorter crunch and one of them is if your viola is drooping and you're trying to grab the strings it just doesn't work you've got to let gravity be your friend and hold your instrument up and the other reason might be if you're not using quite enough bow and you can't really get all three strings so don't be afraid to really land and really move another 
reason might be if you're trying to play too close to the bridge because our strings are actually further apart at the bridge. So when we're doing a double stop that's got three notes in it, we need to move our point of contact just a little bit more towards the fingerboard. So let's try that now. Find your fifth. And find your top note. We're in third position, remember? Should have been like that. And let's practice that last chord. Here we go. Let's make a start now on variation six. So variation six has got these interesting looking notes with the stem and the cross. And instead of being notes that they that we play on our instrument, those notes are a special effect, and this time they are finger snaps. Now if you can't click your fingers, don't worry, you can always just tap the palm of your hand like this and you'll still get the right effect. And um, so let's try that together from variation six. One, two, rest, click, rest, click, rest, click, rest, click, rest, click. That's quite a lot easier than anything we have to do on our viola. So the main thing there is not to forget how many clicks that you're doing. So you might want to go above the clicks and write in how many there are, just so that you don't lose count. Okay, the next section is quite a tricky rhythm. So let's just clap it together so that we get used to the rhythm and feel the groove here. So I'll clap it once and you clap it back. One, two, one, two. You. And. You. Good, hopefully that feels a little bit easier now. You can clap all the way through because that rhythm just happens bar after bar. And then the rhythm does slightly change in bar 137, where we get So, rest, rest. So I'm just going to hold up my music now so you can see that here we've got these two quaver or eighth notes rests that's the same as one crotchet rest or a quarter note rest so it's not as tricky as it looks and then here just be careful of this little rest here this kind of a rest an eighth note rest or a quaver rest i like to call a pig because it looks like a little pig's sort of swirly tail and also if you're saying your quavers or your eighth notes as tts then you can say the pig really loudly in your head and hopefully that will help you not to accidentally play during the rest. So let's just have a go at clapping this bar and we're going to say one, two, pig, t, 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 pig, t, 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 one, two, one, two, pig. Let's do it again. One, two, one, two, pig. I'll leave you to have a go at those notes and if we need to I can go over them in another tutorial but for now I think you should be able to manage all of those notes and then at the end we've got to shout hey and give that everything you've got and then you'll see it says in bar 142 pick up bow so don't forget to pick up your bow to get ready for the finale. Well done everybody, thanks for coming with me on that whistle stop tour of the Paganini and of Matachins. There's a lot more detail for us still to get our teeth into, so make sure that you work through the Paganini and the Matachins piece really slowly so that you're feeling really confident with the notes and the rhythms. The rhythm first and the notes second, and then we can get into some of the more exciting things in the Paganini, like the tempi and the dynamics and the articulation. So really familiarize yourself with the notes and then we can get on to that next time. Have a lovely weekend and I'll see you again on Monday.